In this video, I will show you exactly how to mod any Nintendo 2DS or 3DS so that you can run homebrew and backup games directly from an SD card. This guide will work for any model 3DS, new or old, between firmware versions 11.4 and 11.17. There are a couple of things that you'll need before you start. You will need any unmodded Nintendo 2DS or 3DS that is running any firmware version between 11.4 and 11.17. So yeah, I'll check this in just a moment. You will need access to a PC running either Windows, Linux or Mac. You will also need an SD card that is at least 4 gigabytes in size and has been formatted in the FAT32 format. I'll leave a link in the description to an application you can install which will allow you to format your SD card as FAT32 if you've not already done so. And finally, you will need a way to connect your SD card to your PC. Just before we jump into the video, I wanted to say that I've put a great deal of effort into bringing this video to you today. And I would really appreciate if you could subscribe to the channel and leave a like rating on the video as it really does help the channel out. But now let's get back into the video. Just before you start, it is important, extremely important even, that you do not skip this section of the video, as the next steps are essential to ensure that this is the correct guide for your console. First, we are going to check whether the console already has custom firmware installed. To do this, power off your console and then power it back on with the select button held in. If you boot directly into the home menu, you do not have custom firmware and you can proceed to the next step. If you, however, boot into anything other than the home menu, you will need to stop following this guide and refer to the link in the description labeled CFW already installed, where you will find a written guide with steps on how you should proceed. Once you have confirmed that no custom firmware is installed, you will want to check the firmware version that you are currently running. To do this, click on the settings icon and the firmware version will be displayed on the lower part, on the lower right side of the top screen. This is between 11.4 and 11.17, you are good to proceed. If the firmware version is below 11.4, then you can simply update it to the latest version, which is 11.17. With that out of the way, there's a couple of things that you will want to bear in mind before proceeding. The process that we'll be covering in this video today is known as the MSET9 exploit. It is one of several methods which you can use to hack a 2DS or 3DS. All methods are completely safe if you follow the designated guides correctly. I've linked full written guide covering the MSET9 exploit, which we will be covering today, in the description down below. I've also linked the 3ds.hacks.guide website, where you will be able to explore other methods which may be available to you dependent on the model of the 3DS that you own. My personal advice will be to watch this entire video to get a feel for the process. If you feel comfortable doing this yourself, then refer to the MSET9 written guide in the description down below, follow the steps, and feel free to use this video as a visual reference. In addition, the timestamps in this video will mirror the sections within the written guide, and I will be demonstrating this process today using a Windows system with a Nintendo 2DS on firmware version 11.17. Finally, I just want to say that this process is absolutely safe if followed correctly. I've modded dozens of consoles using this exact method over the previous 6 to 12 months, and I've never encountered even a minor issue. With that said, I take no responsibility for any damage that you may do to your console if you fail to follow the guide correctly, and you do so entirely at your own risk. And with all of that out of the way, we are ready to proceed. The first thing you will want to do is go ahead and insert your SD card into your 3DS and power it on. Your system should then create the required files on your SD card. If it does not, then it is likely because you have not formatted your SD card as FAT32 and it will probably give you an error message, suggesting that the SD card cannot be read or something to that effect. Now, there are a couple of things you will need to download. You will need the latest version of MSET9 and you will need to have at least version 3 or higher of Python installed on your computer. Links for both can be found in the description. Once you have Python installed and the MSET 9 zip downloaded, power off your 3DS, remove the SD card, and connect it into your computer. Now, extract everything from the MSET 9.zip file and copy it to the root of your SD card. If prompted to overwrite any existing files, go ahead and do that. You will now want to locate and open a file named mset 9 
windows.bat. You should see a command prompt window like this one. You'll want to type in the number that corresponds to your system and firmware version and press enter on your keyboard. In my case, I'll enter one as I'm doing this on a Nintendo 2DS that has a firmware version of 11.17. It's very important that you do get this part correct as if you do not, then the exploit will not work. The window should now change to something like this one. Type one on your keyboard again and press enter. This will begin the process. You should now see a disclaimer, type one again and press enter. You should now see a message which states created hacked ID one. Press enter to close the window, reinsert the SD card back into your 3DS and power on your console. I should also add here that if you're doing this on a newer 3DS, you will want to leave the back plate off as the SD card will need to be removed again shortly. Once you have your console powered back on and you're booted into the home screen, you may notice that any games and or apps that you previously had installed have disappeared. This is completely normal and they will come back once the custom firmware has been installed. You'll want to go ahead and open up the Mi Maker application. The bottom screen should start creating some SD card information and files. This is exactly what we want it to do. Now, once you reach the Welcome to Mi Maker screen, do not click on the next, press the home button and exit the Mi Maker application. Launch the system settings app and navigate to data management, Nintendo 3DS, software, reset. Don't worry, this will not delete any of your files or software. Now power off your console, remove the SD card and insert it back into your computer. From the root of your SD card, double click the mset9 windows.bat file, type in the same number that you typed in previously, which corresponded to your console and firmware version and press enter. You should now see this screen again, but this time the mset9 state will be ready and it will be green. If the mset9 state shows is not ready though, you will need to type two on your keyboard, press enter, and then follow the steps that are displayed on screen. Assuming you do have a green ready state though, type zero, press enter, and this will close the window. At this stage in the process, it is absolutely crucial that you follow every single step correctly. I would advise you watching me perform this section first before attempting it yourself. This is the part where the custom firmware will be installed. Reinsert the SD card into your console and power it on. Upon booting into the home menu, you should see that you are already hovering over the system settings icon. If you are not, then navigate to the system settings with the D-pad, hover over it and power off your console, then power it back on. Press A on system settings, then on data management, Nintendo 3DS, extra data. Now at this point, you do not want to press any buttons or touch the touchscreen. With the console still powered on and without touching any buttons or the touchscreen, remove the SD card from the console. Set the console to one side and leave it powered on. Reinsert the SD card back into your computer. From the root of your SD card, double click the mset 9 windowsbat file and type the number which corresponds to your console and firmware version once again, and then press enter. Now type three and press enter. You should see a message come up stating mset 9 successfully injected. Press enter to close the window. Now, once again, without touching any buttons or the touch screen, reinsert the SD card back into your console. If successful, you will now have booted into the safe B9 installer. If you see a red screen or an endless loading screen, do not worry, you have not bricked or damaged your console. However, at this point, you will need to refer to the troubleshooting guide linked in the description and follow the steps displayed. Now, at this point, we're going to install the custom firmware. A screen should now be displayed requesting you to input a combination of button presses. Input these as requested and then press A to reboot your console. You will now boot into Luma 3DS configuration menu. However, there is nothing we need to do in here right now. So press start to reboot the console.
Now, power off the console, remove the SD card, and reinsert it into your computer. From the root of the SD card, double click the mset 9 windowsbat file and type the number which corresponds to your console and firmware version, and then press Enter. Type 4 and press Enter, and then type 5 and press Enter again. This will remove the exploit from your SD card as it is no longer needed, and it will prevent us from unnecessarily triggering it in the future and potentially causing damage to our system. So it's very important that you do follow this step thoroughly. Now, at this stage, we are going to need to download two additional files which are linked in the description, labeled xfinalizehelper.firm and finalize.romfs. Once downloaded, copy the finalize.romfs file directly onto the root of the SD card and open the Luma folder and create a folder named payloads with a lowercase p if one does not already exist. Copy the xfinalizehelper.firm file to the payloads folder. Once the files are copied over, reinsert the SD card into your console and power it back on. At this stage, you will need to ensure that you are connected to a Wi-Fi network. Once connected to the internet, navigate to the system settings and then to the other settings and then the system update and update your system if you have not already done so. Don't worry though, this is completely safe and is required in order to proceed. Once the system update has completed, press the left shoulder, the D-pad down and the select button at the same time and this will boot you into the Rosalina menu. Press A on miscellaneous options and then on dump DSP firmware. Press B to continue, select nullify user time offset and press A, press B, press B again and then finally B once more to exit out of the Rosalina menu. Now power off your console, press and hold the X button and power the console back on whilst keeping the X button pressed in. This will launch the finalizing setup helper. However, if you have booted into the home menu, then you have likely misspelled the payloads folder in the previous step. So you will need to go ahead and correct that and try again. At this stage, you will be prompted to create an essential files backup. Press A to do this and then A again once it has completed. You may be prompted to correct the date and time. If so, correct it and press A and then A again. Press the home button to bring up the menu. Select scripts and then finalize. Follow the instructions on screen. Once you see the message setup complete, press A to power off your console. The final thing you will need to do is to reinsert your SD card into your computer and make a backup copy of the folder gm9 forward slash backups. These are your system NAND backup files and will be essential to recover your console if you were to ever soft brick it in the future. But that is basically it. You can reinsert the SD card into your console and it is fully modded and homebrew ready. You can run backup games directly from the SD card as well as a bunch of other fantastic things. Once you do power back on your console, you should be presented with a bunch of homebrew applications which you can find out how to take full advantage of by checking out some of the other videos on my channel. But that brings this video to a close. If you have any questions or feedback or anything you would like to see me cover in the future, let me know in the comments down below, and I will catch you all in the next one.